In 1998, Bobby Mana, the former consigliere of the Genovese crime family, was jailed for ordering the failed Gotti assassination and orchestrating the murder of organized crime figure Erwin Fatman Schiff, aged 50. Mana was a major figure in the Genovese crime family in New Jersey at the time. He was mob boss Vincent Giganti's consigliere and headed up the family's operations in the Garden State. On August 8th of 1987, the six-foot con man Erwin the Fat Man Schiff, said to weigh in at 400 pounds, dressed to the nines, as usual, was seated in an expensive east side restaurant, the Bravo Sergio on 2nd Avenue, having just finished a lavish dinner. His late model Lincoln Continental was double parked out front. Seated at a table near the fire door exit, he ordered a Caesar salad, double shrimp cocktail, veal rollatini and rigatoni with bacon, onions, and tomato, followed by bananas and strawberries flambe. The fat man was widely known in Manhattan circles, and many saw him as a harmless rogue who could have been written into a Damon Runyon story. He always had an enormous amount of cash on him and was a very, very lavish spender, but very few people knew how he made his money. Schiff, as one news story put it, called himself a financial consultant and lived in a $13,000 a month east side duplex penthouse, drove a $185,000 antique Stutz Bearcat and half million dollar cigarette speedboat, gambled away hundreds of thousands of dollars in Atlantic City, claimed ownership of hotels and casinos and clubs, and once listed his net worth as $20 million. The beautiful 5'10 blonde with him was Judy Gallup, a model. Gallup was surprised when Schiff arrived alone for dinner. The supper had been set up by her husband, but he could not attend because of the death in his family. Her husband wanted to break into the music publishing business and told her that Schiff could help with that. Schiff's record included convicts for writing fraudulent checks in 1962. In 1977, he pleaded guilty to tax evasion. He was fined $5,000 and given a five-year suspended sentence. At the time of his murder, Schiff faced court judgments of about $1 million and was under investigation by the Internal Revenue Service. The New York police had Schiff as a known loan shark and the FBI had a record of him meeting with Anthony Corallo, boss of the Lucchese crime family, in 1976 over dinner. A friend of his told the New York Post that Schiff talked his way into control of his talent agency and ran it into bankruptcy. He said he was one of the few Jews allowed in the mafia because he was good at handling money. In one of his schemes, to get a bank president's cooperation in $6 million worth of frauds, Schiff bribed him with a $2.5 million yacht, a Mercedes sports car, and two chauffeur-driven luxury sedans. In going through Schiff's tangled finances, the FBI uncovered a total of $40 million in frauds. Schiff bragged that he was, in his words, the mob's laundry man, meaning he washed dirty money for the various families, as opposed to running the money through the Atlantic City casinos to wash. Otherwise, Schiff laundered an estimated $3 million in mob money each month in Atlantic City casinos. He mostly worked with a faction of the Genovese family run by Capo Joseph Pagano. During the two-hour meal, Schiff talked of his diet and was proud of losing weight and said he would celebrate the loss with banana flambe for desert with tea. The bill came to $90 and Schiff paid, adding a $30 tip to it. Schiff asked his shapely blonde, what if someone offered you $100,000 if you slept with him? At that very second, a tall gunman in a dark suit, a mask over his face, casually walked into the restaurant from the fire door, stood behind Schiff and fired two bullets into the back of his head, killing him and then slipped back out through the fire door. Gallup said that after the shooting she leaped up from her chair and ran out onto the street with two other couples she didn't know, and that they ran down 2nd Avenue where one of the men hailed a taxi. You didn't see anything, the man said to Gallup, and she agreed. He then handed the cabbie $20 and told him to take Gallup anywhere she wanted. None of Schiff's fellow dinners or the restaurant staff in the small, 12-table restaurant saw anything. An FBI memo noted that subsequent to the homicide, all restaurant patrons fled without paying their bills. Why did they kill him? The police suspect that the mob murdered the fat man, who lived to flash his thick roll of $100 bills, for using mob money to back his own check-kiting schemes. In that scheme, Schiff would deposit money in banks, then withdraw it and write checks for amounts larger than he could possibly cover. Schiff eventually would pay back the overdraft, but owed banks amounts of more than $50,000 for days or even weeks while he used the cash for high living and business deals that he was involved in.
When he did it with his own money, nobody in the mafia cared. When he used their money to do it, thereby possibly exposing them to the law, they cared enough to kill him. Prosecutors in the case against Mana figured that Schiff was killed because he had been skimming from payoffs to the Gambinos from construction contractors. But exactly why he was killed has never been made clear, largely because no one has ever admitted to the murder. As a prosecutor in the case said, whether Erwin Schiff was preyed upon or was one of the predators is one of the intriguing questions that has never been answered. There are any number of motives to murder a guy like Schiff, said Andrew Maloney, U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York. Three days before the murder, in a Hoboken restaurant owned by Martin Motz Casella, the Schiff hit was discussed and picked up on an FBI recording. An unidentified man is heard to say Erwin Schiff, but we'll settle for that. We'll do him good at night. Bobby Manon didn't like CC, apparently referring to Schiff's company. Is Bocce busy? A second man asked, with the first replying, no, and then mentioned that Bocce, quote, owed the family. Bocce was Richard Bocce de Siccio, an associate of slain Genovese soldier John DeGilio. It was decided that Richard Bocce de Siccio would oversee oversee the hit. As part of that, de Siccio was already in the restaurant and let the hitman, Anthony Rotolo, into the restaurant through the emergency door. The hitman was Anthony Tony the Guinea Rotolo, a North Jersey hood by way of Calabria, Italy. Rotolo had convictions for extortion, fraudulent activities, assault, and public disorder offenses. He was close to John DiGilio. After DiGilio died, he aligned himself with Bobby Manna. For his front, Rotolo and his wife Jane managed the Sir John's pub Rotolo's wife, Jane. After the Schiff murder, the same FBI recording picked up between Frank Dipsy Daniello, a former Hoboken, New Jersey policeman, Mats Casella, the cafe owner, and mobster James Napoli. It was Daniello who provided the weapon to murder Schiff. Daniello, Irwin. Irwin Schiff. The place was jammed. All the people ran out. He was in there with a broad, this kid, referring to Anthony Rotolo in wonderment and awe. Casella, it's a small place. Daniello, it takes guts though to do it like that. This kid, Rotolo, is a Casella, stone killer. On September 21st, a month after the Schiff murder, the assassination of John Gotti came up in a conversation between Mana, Casella, and Daniello. The order to take out Gotti and his brother Gene came directly from Genovese boss Vincent the Ching Giganti because Gotti, as head of the Gambino crime family, was muscling in on Jersey turf controlled by Mana. The FBI had charged that Daniello was supposed to be the hitman in the plot to kill the goddess. Decisio also was to help carry out the murders. The plan was to hit Gotti near a club he frequented on Woodhaven Boulevard and 101st Avenue in Ozone Park, Queens. Wear a disguise, Mana said. It's an open place. An unidentified man asked, Do you know where you are going to do this guy? Yeah, on that corner, Casella responded. You know, this should be good and fast if it's John Gotti up on the boulevard and, ah, uh, 101, the man said. The FBI was required by law to notify Gotti of the reported plot, which they did, and, according to an October 9th transcript, the Genovese associates in North Jersey learned that Gotti was on to them. Hey, John Gotti knows, Casella said. An unidentified man responded, John Gotti knows we. That we ordered it, another man said. Regardless, the plotting continued. On January 10th, Mana was overheard saying, a big hit, John Gotti, and then was heard discussing with DeCicillo and others the selection of a gunman. Two days later, in a conversation between Mana and James Napoli, Mana said, Gene Gotti's dead. When are you going to hit him? Napoli asked. Gene Gotti's dead, Mana repeated. We're going to be paying for this, you know, for the rest of our lives, Napoli said. In June of 1988, dozens of New Jersey State Police rounded up Mana, DeCiccio, Casella, and Daniello, as well as other members of the Genovese family. Mana and the others were slammed with a 42-count indictment that also charged them with extortion, loan sharking, labor racketeering, and gambling. The transcripts used in the case were based on 12 conversations that took place at Casella's restaurant, an Italian restaurant in Hoboken where Mana held court. The conversations occurred between August 5, 1987 and January 14, 1988. 
A federal grand jury indictment, based on the tapes, accused Manna, Martin Casella, and Richard Bacci DeCiccio of conspiring to kill Schiff. The three were also accused of plotting to murder Gotti, allegedly the Gambino crime family boss and Gotti's brother, Gene. The judge in Manna's case was U.S. District Judge Marianne Trump Barry, Donald Trump's sister. Vivian Lewis, a legal secretary who lived in an apartment over the Bravo Sergio restaurant in Manhattan, testified that she saw a well-dressed Decisio. She said she noticed him because when she took her garbage out just after 10 p.m., Decisio was standing in the back of the first floor hallway by a door leading into the restaurant. He looked like he was poised for something, she said. He made me feel very uncomfortable like I shouldn't have been there. Vincent Fish Kafaro testified about mob protocol, initiation rites, and Mana's place in the hierarchy. The Fish had been a top man to Fat Tony Salerno of the Genovese family until he became a government informant. Other information brought out in the trial was that Schiff was secretly an informant and had told the FBI that former Queensboro President Donald Manies pocketed a $1 million bribe for a cable TV franchise. In the end, everyone involved in the murder and the plots went to jail. Mats Casella was convicted with Mana and Decisio but died in prison in 1992. Mana was sentenced to 80 years in federal prison. He and Decisio remain in jail. Daniello, the former cop, was released from the racketeering charges and was sentenced to only four years in prison.